Okay, now I'm going to present to you quality control part 2. From the previous presentation, I have explained the importance of calibration to set up a test system to obtain the required reading. However, how to determine that the calibration is giving the correct result? It is by using quality control. So, quality control is used to ensure that all components in the test component are in good condition. So, it is to verify uh, calibration, chemical, reagent, solution, analyzer and water. Yeah. As additional, QC also can be used to verify the operator and lab environment. If the operator is performing the test wrong way, the QC result may be wrong or violated. If for environment, if the temperature is not suitable for the test, usually we need the temperature room. It can also affect the QC result. However, QC is not suitable to verify sample or specimen and test method or test principle. These two components need to verify via quality assurance or total quality management activity. So why we need to perform QC before or during analyzing the patient specimen? It is because we want to make sure that all patient results are correct or accurate. So it is to produce quality result for patient safety. Yeah? So for example, if the patient have end stage renal failure and need to be on dialysis, However, the lab produced the normal renal failure, uh, the, run, the normal renal profile instead of abnormal. This will lead the doctor of not performing the dialysis on the patient and could endanger the patient's life. So the function of QC uh, is in this slide to monitor the accuracy and precision of the complete analytical process to detect immediate errors that occur due to test system failure, adverse environment condition and operator performance, to monitor over time the accuracy and precision of test performance that may be influenced by changes in test system performance and environmental conditions and variance in operator performance. Note, QC does not monitor the pre ethical and post ethical process of the test. That phases also could affect the accuracy of the test result. Therefore, total quality management is used to monitor the error in practical and post ethical error. So, example of TQM is ISO 15189. Okay, what is the difference between QC and calibrator? QC, it is a substance similar to patient samples. The substance have known concentration that consists of mean and ST or range. The concentration is based on a group of data from one lab or many lab. Yeah. Whereas calibration, it is a substance with specific concentration. The concentration is based on certified reference material or standard reference material and traceable to test reference method. So what is the function of QC uh, and what is the difference from the calibration function? So QC function is to checking the instrument's calibration and most of the ethical component. It is to detect and take error and problem stability. For calibration uh, function, it is to setting the analyzer to the test requirement, produce calibration curve that can be compared and estimate the concentration in the sample. Okay, for QC function, it is to measure accuracy and precision, prevent incorrect result, and help in troubleshooting. So QC should be performed after analyzing calibration and before or during analyzing patient sample whereas calibration should be performed before analyzing the QC and before of course analyzing the patient sample okay what is the type of QC it has two major type which is internal quality control and external quality assurance so for internal quality control it is a set of procedures undertaken by lab staff for the continuous monitoring of operations and the results of measurements in order to decide whether the results are reliable enough to be released. So it is to ensure the constancy of results day to day. Whereas for external quality assurance or EQA and other name is external quality assessment or proficiency testing scheme definition system designed to objectively assess the quality of results obtained by the lab by means of an external agency. 
So I will uh, discuss more on the internal quality control first. The production of IQC could be S in the list. So the dependent control means that the QC material is produced by the same company that supply the reagent and analyzer. In-house control means that the lab produce its own IQC material. While for independent control or third party control meaning that the IQC material is produced by different company that supply the reagent and analyzer. Uh, example, you buy reagent analyzer from company A but you buy the QC from company uh, C. Uh, something like that. So, what are the characteristics of IQC material? So, these are the characteristics of IQC material. Yes, same metric as patient sample, lyophilized or liquid form, contain analyte either single or multiple, it is an helicopter form, have non concentration that is mean and range, one or multiple level of concentration, stability and volume should enough for certain period of time. Okay, let's we go through one by one. So, first one, same metrics as patient, patient sample. If QC material, uh, sorry, the IQC material should be similar to patient sample as possible. So, if your patient sample is serum, the QC should be serum. If the patient sample urine, then the IQC material should be urine. So, this can be accomplished via pulling actual sample of human serum or urine, pulling animal serum, or use artificial protein-based solution that has same physical characteristic as human serum. Okay, second characteristic is lyophilized or liquid. So, IQC material could be in lyophilized or in liquid. Lyophilized mean freeze dry form. So, there is pro and contra for the lyophilized in liquid. For lyophilized, the material is much stable. It is can be up to 3 years. While liquid, the material stability is shorter. It is can be up to 2 years only. However, for lyophilized, it need a proper preparation during the reconstitute process. For liquid, it is to, uh, it is ready to use. Because for lyophilized, it has volume issue during the preparation. So, during reconstitute for lyophilized QC, we need to use the tool that could deliver volume with high accuracy. If the volume being used is not correct, then it can affect the concentration of the material in it. In case, uh, in this case, the analyte is uh, analyte of interest lah. Uh, the test that we want to test. Usually, we use volumetric glass pipette with a grade. Yeah, volumetric glass pipette with a grade. What is reconstitute? It is mean the process of restoring something dry to its original state by adding water or solution into it. For liquid, well, no volume issue. Okay. Okay, another characteristic, it can contain a light either single or multiple. So, IQC material can contain a light, uh, should contain a light of interest. Yeah, If uh, you want to use the QC for testing the RP, RP test, then uh, the QC material should contain uh, sodium, potassium, urea and creatinine. Okay, the analyte in the QC could be one, two or more in the QC material. IQC that have only one analyte called single analyte IQC. IQC that have two or more analytes called multiple analyte QC. Okay, for IQC that make single analyte, it is because to due to stability issue. Uh, example is CRP and, ammon and ammonia. Because uh, if the analyte of interest is mixed with another analyte, there will be reaction that can deteriorate the analyte of interest. However, lab usually use multiple analyte QC due to ease of use. Of course, because one QC we can uh, in one run, we can uh, testing for many analytes or many tests. Of course, it is save time, energy and cost and less error of handling. So, we prefer to use multiple analyte IQC where possible. Okay, QC also it is in helicopter form. Helicopter mean 
material is stored in small volume from a larger quantity usually we can find uh, QC in 1 mil, 5, 10 or maximum 15 mils it is because after the IQC being opened the material will be helicoptered into smaller volume the purpose to maintain integrity of the analyte concentration because once IQC open and take out from the store medium it is subject to evaporation and thus easily change in concentration yeah? when the concentration range the IQC can perform its function to monitor the precision and accuracy of the test by helicoptering only a small portion is taken out and used while the rest of IQC material still be in store and the integrity is maintained okay I discuss more about this matter this is the example of uh, storage of IQC material it is in small bottle or in small uh, vial whereas for chemical material it can be stored in bulk of 1 liter or 2.5 liter correct you have made this right okay so when we want to use this IQC material uh, each IQC bottle we need to helicopter more to uh, another smaller volume that enough for analyzing before use so that only one small portion from the IQC can be can be used meaning that from one bottle it can be used several times without deteriorating the other portion of the IQC material so the IQC uh, the helicopter IQC is analyzed to monitor the test performance daily this use IQC this one that already being used need to be discarded uh, cannot uh, we cannot store it back yeah because the integrity of it already deteriorate after usage and also it, it, it depends on the manufacturer recommendation okay QC should have non concentration yeah should have mean and range so the concentration value uh, of analyte of interest is obtained after being analyzed several times minimum 20 times in one or more lab so mean will become the target value of the QC and range it is the acceptable value of the QC from minimum to maximum so this is the example of the QC it should come with it is uh, it should come with the insert and inside the insert it will state the analyte yeah that we interest to check our test yeah related to our test uh, the unit of the analyte or test and then the mean value mean value and the range value uh, from minimum to maximum this is the level one and level two okay there's two level okay so qc has one or multiple level of concentration so most iqc material have two level of concentration either normal or abnormal or low or high yeah this is example of two level qc normal and abnormal example of analyte is renal profile fsl and lft and etc of biochemistry mm, three level also it also can come in three levels of concentration so the concentration could be in normal abnormal or very abnormal or low medium and high so this is the example of three level of qc yeah, which uh, consists of normal level abnormal level and very abnormal or very high level so example of analyte is mm, msa and hematology seldom QC material with one level of concentration nowadays mm, previously there is but nowadays very difficult to find QC with only one level of concentration and mm, the concentration should cover the medical significant level or clinically important range of analyte, analyte concentration uh, medical significant levels in easy meaning it is concentration at which doctor will decide whether the patient is normal or uh, abnormal or the patient need treatment or doesn't need treatment so QC concentration should cover on that medical significant level and last characteristic the stability and volume should enough for a certain period of time because QC is used uh, every day for daily monitoring therefore the stability and volume should cover for one month six one or up to three years depend on the analyte stability okay it is because every batch of iqc have its own mean and range value 
So if we change QC batch a lot, meaning that the mean and range value will change. Thus, it is difficult to monitor in long term run because in one year of operation, there will be changes of operator, agent load, calibration, environment, and many other. So if we frequently change IQC load, we cannot determine whether the variation of IQC results are due to either previous factor yeah, or IQC factor. So for in-house IQC or IQC that need uh, to self-development, uh, to self-develop concentration, whether a new batch is going to be used, lab need to re-establish the concentration uh, that is mean and range. This will take minimum of 20 days for statistics statistically significant therefore it this will cause a lot of work to do time and operator needed mm -hmm. so how do manufacturer develop the QC or even new okay first we need to pull sample until sufficient uh, uh, volume of usage uh, yeah? sufficient volume of usage for uh, six months at least or one or up to three years uh, so we need to pull uh, many many samples and we need to consider the analyte of interest. Example, if the QC material for RP and LT, so it should contain the sodium, potassium, urea, creatinine, ALP, and the analyte for LFT in the QC material. And we need to consider the level of IQC. Um, example, for two levels of IQC, Rhino profile should have two pools of serum that contain normal and abnormal renal profile so some additives such such as bovine will be added to the IQC to achieve target level uh, so this is the example of human serum of 3 liter and 1 liter ok and then we need to run the this material every day for at least 20 days preferably 1 month or more and uh, so we need to analyze the pool sample every day um, so we need to analyze the in, uh, of interest example iqc for rp of course we need to analyze sodium potassium urea and creatinine a uh, note the control should be assessed over an extended period to ensure that it is subjected to changes in lab environment that may occur with different operator or at different times of day that is why we need to run minimum of 20 days and remember to record the data obtained you don't want to repeat this testing okay and then we need to calculate the data we need to find the mean and SD of the QC data theoretically repeating same sample will produce same result however it is not happen and there will always be variation in the results produced from the same sample with a correctly operating system Repeat test of the same control sample should produce a Gaussian distribution. Uh, should produce something uh, this pattern. So most of the data will accumulate at one point, and a small portion will spread far from this point. So this is approximately 68% of values should fall between plus minus one SD range, and be evenly distributed on either side of main 95% of value should lie between plus minus 2 SD range and 99.7% between plus minus 3 SD the remaining of 0.3% of the data theoretically spread out of infinity and for the range of the acceptable range of IQC is plus minus 2 SD yeah plus minus 2 SD how to calculate mean SD? These are the formula. I am sure you can definitely calculate yourself. Yeah. So in in QC, mean will become the true value or target value, and SD become the limit for acceptability of the control. So become the uh, control range lah. And the range that we accept is plus minus two SD. Okay. And how to perform the IQC? Okay. Now we have the QC. How to use DQC? Uh, it is based on the time of analyze DQC. So, when to analyze DQC? Of course, it need to analyze before or during analyzing the samples or beginning of each uh, shift or after an instrument is serviced. 
or when the reagent lots are changed we want to make sure that uh, reagent is good after doing calibration of course we need to perform QC or when the patient result seems inappropriate and IQC results must be within acceptable limit before releasing patient's result and frequency of analyzing the QC uh, according to CLIA please uh, find yourself in Google what CLIA mean uh, it 8 hour to 24 hours interval other method is based on total number of specimen if specimen less than 50 only one QC level per day if the sample uh, 50 to 100 specimen per day we need two QC levels uh, one day and if the QC more than 100 specimen per day we need two QC levels two times per day however we usually use number two and number three not this uh, up to criteria yeah. so how to interpret the QC result or QC data first by quick checking yeah. we just compare uh, our data to the QC result or data with the acceptable limit and true value second use the level genetic chart uh, the best uh, then genetic chart uh, LJ chart is follow the target and second we use the Westgard multi rule okay how uh, how to check the QC using quick checking uh, okay this is example on how we want to do the quick checking this is uh, the daily QC data on 3rd of March in 2020 uh, so we did run uh, QC for test total protein AST, ALT and LDH yeah and the QC data is uh, level 1 and le level 2 and these are the data so what we need to do is we need to compare this data QC data with each its mean and range uh, so we do comparing oh, okay so for total uh, total protein level 1 save data 7.6 so it is in the range is it in the range okay near to the mean total protein QC level 2 reading is 7.2 okay we check okay it is also in range yeah so total protein test is okay then we can perform the test yeah on patient sample how about AST QC level 1 15 oh it is outside the range uh, AST level 2 16 oh it is in the range and at the mean yeah at the target value so acceptable or oh, cannot although the level 2 is in target value there is problem in level 1 so meaning that we need to do troubleshooting on AST for that day yeah ALT how about uh, ALT uh, QC level 1 is 10 compare here or oh, it is within range and it is wow at the target value yeah uh, QC ALT QC level 2 it, the reading is 20 compare with the range okay it is in the range and it is in the at the target value we can say that the ALT uh, test on that day is tip top so how about LDH uh, can we run the LDH on that day or we need to do troubleshooting I hope that you can figure it yourself Okay, second way is to using the use the level genetic uh, level genetic chart. It is a graph that the QC data is plotted on to give a visual indication whether a lab test is working well or not. So x axis present pre, x axis present uh, frequency or time, y axis present the SD present how far the QC from the target value. So the y axis consists of mean and SD. 1, 2, 3, 1, uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, plus SD and 1, 2, 3 minus SD. Yeah. Uh, it can also be stated as actual value of concentration that synchronized with the mean of uh, mean and 1, 2 and 3 SD. So y axis show deviation of daily QC from the mean or target value if the data fall around plus minus yeah, plus minus 2 SD uh, the QC is accepted so QC here 
is accept, accepted yeah uh, qc this one is not accepted uh, this uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, qc all qc here is accepted except for this qc cannot be accepted we need to uh, take action or we need to troubleshoot this one uh, and patient result cannot be released uh, for this uh, qc and also this uh, labor journey chart it has two section the positive sd section yeah and the minus sd section the positive at this sd section is where the qc value is more than the mean while the negative sd section is where the qc value is less than mean okay so purpose of lj is to ensure that the data is within acceptable range that is plus minus to sd because using the lv uh, LJ chart, we can uh, but easily check that the QC is within plus minus to ST and also it is to detect small but significant error uh, by using the trend of the LJ uh, yeah. so how to plot the daily QC data on LJ chart uh, how to plot the data on this LJ chart, ok, I give you example uh, example here for this uh, QC the mean given is 250 and the standard deviation yeah when at 1 sd is 8 yeah so okay let's say we have the qc uh, day 6 yeah qc day 6 the reading is 258 uh, reading is 258 so how to why it put here uh, the calculation is our reading 258 minus with the mean 250 divide with sd uh, so we get sd qc1 1 so that, that's why it is plotted in here 1 sd here is mean 1 sd 2 sd 3 sd mean minus 1 sd minus 2 sd and minus 3 sd okay another example qc day 11 uh, qc day 11 the reading is here is 250 uh, how to calculate 250 minus the mean 250 uh, divide with SD so we get SD QC the 11 minus 1.25 so this one is minus 1 so this one is minus 0.25 that's, that's why it is plotted here ok my question is what is the SD for QC day 15? Can you calculate? Or QC uh, for at the day, what is QC at the day 2? Uh, with the concentration of 255, can you calculate? Okay, so what is the target, uh, LJ target? Uh, this is the pattern of LJ target. We want the QC data near to mean. Uh, yeah? We want the QC data near to mean. And the distribution is quite symmetry. The QC on the positive side and the negative side is more or less equal. However, there are patterns of LJ that may show error or risk error of the test. Uh, the systematic error is trend, bias and shift. Yeah. Whereas uh, also LJ can show the random error. So this is the trend pattern of LJ. Section C and section D show the trend error of LJ it is gradual increase magnitude of the QC on the same side of section either positive or negative side and may eventually out from the limit uh, what is bias? Uh, section C show the bias pattern it is consistently on the same side of the section not symmetry it may near to the mean or plus minus 1 SD or maybe near to plus minus 2 SD. What is a shift? Uh, this is show the shift pattern. Sudden change in control mean. Uh, yeah. it, so uh, before this it is here, lie here and then suddenly change and fall into here, this area. Okay, this one show random error. The magnitude is not predictable. Sometimes it is positive, sometimes it is negative, sometimes out, sometimes in. Uh, so this is the random error pattern. So this uh, random error pattern, yeah, uh, the trend, the bias and shift, we need to 
look into not necessarily uh, to uh, reject the QC if it is within plus minus 2 SD but ni, we need to uh, to monitor uh, maybe the uh, test component is something expired maybe the cat expired we need to monitor lah the test component okay and another way to inspect the QC is using the Westgard rule. Uh, Westgard rule, it is uh, used in conjunction with each other to provide a high level of error detection while reducing the incidence of false rejection. Uh, so, there is different combination of rules depending on the number of controls being used and the total allowable error. Purpose for high error detection and low false rejection. So, these are the typical uh, combi rule combination. So, for controls run in two levels, example chemistry test, these are rule that we use. 1-3-S, 1-2-S, 2-2-S, R-4-S, 4-1-S and 10-X. While controls that run in three levels, example for immunoassay and hematology test, uh, uh, and hematology test, these are rules that we use in Westgate material rule. 1-3-S, 2 of 32S, R4S, 31S and 12X. Okay. So this is the 13S rule. Yeah. Meaning that 1 QC uh, is outside 2 SD. Uh, sorry, 1 QC is outside 3 SD. Uh, yeah. So this is a uh, 1 3 S rule. It indicates shift and systematic error or increased randomness. What is our action? We need to reject run. We need to do troubleshooting. So, when, when I say reject run, if you run the patient sample during uh, this time, you need to reject that patient sample. You need to troubleshoot the QC first and then after it is okay within plus minus 2 SD, you need to repeat the patient sample that had been run during this time. Okay, I, I hope you understand. Okay, how about 1-2-S rule? 1-2-S uh, meaning 1-QC have uh, violated outside plus minus 2-SD. Uh, so, action, uh, it is a warning rule. Action, just repeat run. If the second run is okay, no need to uh, do sample rejection. Meaning that um, if there is uh, uh, apa? Uh, happen 1 to S and then you do uh, you repeat the QC and then it is within the plus minus 2 SD so the patient result that had been run during this time uh, you doesn't need to uh, reject you can release that patient uh, result uh, because the QC second time run is ok so uh, ok if however if uh, this one to S always occur, then we need to monitor for possible cause. Usually, uh, it is uh, because the QC stability after towing process. Okay, what is the rule for two to S or two of three to S? Ah, this is the rule, the pattern of two to S, meaning that two QC have violated have violated two SD, hmm. or uh, two QC levels from three levels have violated two SD. Mm, yeah, so indicated uh, indicate systematic error, potentially affecting a specific a specific portion of metric curve. Action may require run rejection. Usually, I I reject and I do troubleshooting lah. Uh, so okay, we need to do troubleshooting and we need to. Uh, uh, better we repeat the patient results yeah during uh, this QC violated okay how about R4S R4S meaning that two consecutive uh, two consecutive QC yeah distance each other in 4 SD uh, so this is the QC first uh, same level this is the previous and this is recent and the distance between these two consecutive QC is 1, 2, 3, 4 SD. Uh, how about the QC which have two levels? Oh, sorry, I this one. Eh? Okay. Uh, same also. 
if the QC on one run that have two levels but the distance between these two levels is 4 SD 1, 2, 3, 4 4 level 1 and 4 level 2 so the R4S uh, rule is violated yeah so it indicate random error potentially affecting affect a specific portion of method curve action may require run rejection and uh, need troubleshoot usually this can happen yeah usually i can get this uh, happen because my staff accidentally um apa, analyze the qc in wrong way maybe they run this one supposed to be uh, low level uh, uh apa high low level but uh, high level but uh, they put in in high level meaning that macam terbalik lah yeah? uh, something like terbalik ok the 41S or 31S rule meaning that uh, ok 41S meaning that 4 consecutive data 4 consecutive data is violated is outside 1 SD but not exceeding 2 SD uh, yeah? has exceed 1 SD but not exceeding 2 SD uh, 431S meaning that 2 QC data consecutive QC data have exceeded 1 SD but still not uh, exceeded 2 SD uh, just between 1 and 2 uh, but it is uh, not near to mean lah. Okay. so this one indicate systematic error may signal a change in ethical characteristic of system example control load or uh, care load uh, and the critical significance of change considered uh, should be considered before taking any action so uh, action may re not require re rejection meaning that when we got QC like this we still can run the patient sample yeah? we still can re uh, accept the patient's result and may not require immediate action may be indicated to perform maintenance or calibration therefore uh, therefore must do checking on all components of the test system uh, when you get this kind of violation you need you need to check all components of the test system you need to check is the calibration okay is your qc is okay is the analyzer okay yeah is the water okay uh, if that one all that component okay then this should be not pro not a problem to the patient result okay for 10x or 12x so 10x is for two levels and 12x is for uh, three levels of qc uh, so this uh, 10x meaning that a uh, 10 consecutive uh, qc yeah 10 Q consecutive qc data does not exceed one sd uh, for 12 uh, x 12 consecutive qc data does not exceed 1 plus minus 1 SD so it is very near to the mean right uh, it is very near to the mean so uh, it it just uh, so most co control does not exceed 1 SD it indicate a significant error may signal a change in analytical characteristic of system example uh, control load or care load usually is is not a clinically significant bias so action may not require radiation may not require immediate action may be indicated to perform maintenance or calibration therefore must do checking on all components of the test system uh, this action same as uh, same as 41S or 31S uh, you doesn't need to reject the patient's result you still can run the uh, test if the test component system is ok so this is the real scenario yeah I have a case. My control measurement uh, not exceed uh, to SD control limit, but for consecutive control measurement exceed the same mean plus uh, SD or the same mean minus one S control limit, which is for one S lah. Uh, so the material is for one S. O N ten consecutive control measurement fall on one side of mean, which is the rule is ten X. What does it mean? Accept or reject run. Uh, so this is actually very straightforward this is the westgard answer westgard rule answer yeah uh, this is a very st straightforward question nevertheless we are going to make it complicated 
in classic version of West Guard rule, you only trigger the other rules only after a two one to S control rule was violated. So strictly according to the classic rules, if there wasn't a one to S violation, then you you don't use the other rules and everything is in. Ah, uh, meaning that, uh, for ten S for one for S, yeah, it is accepted. Just check the uh, test component. So this is another rule, yeah, another scenario also. So uh, what I want to point here, yeah, the scenario given is an is the example why nowadays some lab use six sigma QC instead of levagenic and Westcott rule only. So this is to solve the QC with precise, yeah, and accurate performance. But the QC data is consistently in one side. Uh, the QC data is consistently biased. Oh. For LJ pattern, bias. Uh, so how to troubleshoot? We can use type of error is guidance. Uh, so for random error, it could be uh, it is uh, occur change in SD, uh, random outlier or random direction, represent imprecision, yeah, or maybe inaccuracy, magnitude not predictable. In LJ showed as random distribution. In Westcott multi rule, it showed as one three S and R for S. Um, okay, for systematic error, it is change in mean of control values or rem remain constant or predictable magnitude. It represent uh, represent an accuracy or bias of method. For LJ, uh, the LJ will show as LJ bias, LJ trend, and LJ shift. Yeah. For Westcott material, the rule that violated is two to S or 2 of 3 to S, 4 1 S or 3 1 S, 10 X or 12 X. Okay, so the random error, what is the possible cause of random error? Maybe it can be uh, caused by bubble in reagent, bubble in reagent line or instrument line, inadequate mixing uh, reagent, unstable temperature and many more. I hope that you can read by yourself. Yeah. For systematic error, it, uh, usually I get this kind of error lah because change in reagent, change in, in care which cause the change in value, yeah? change in control that co which cause change of value and I'm not in informed. Uh, usually we should uh, setting back the care liberator and control value if there is large changes, uh, large, large changes, yeah. Uh, wrong care or control value that we set in the analyzer, yeah, improper prepared reagent, care control, and uh, many more. I hope that you can read by yourself what is the possible error uh, or systematic error. Uh, this is other. What is the possible error? Uh, possible cause that uh, uh, apa possible error that cause the shift error. And this is what the possible that cause the trend error, yeah, uh, such as slow deterioration reagent or control. This one I usually uh, uh, per find a lot. Calibration shift, change in temperature. Ah, uh, also I usually meet this one. Deterioration of lamp or light filter. Not, uh, however, this is not the definite cause. Other cause than this may give error to test system so you need to understand the test system so you need to uh, have the test principle nature uh, you need to understand sorry you need to understand the test principle nature so you need to read the textbook yeah uh, what is the you need to understand the system involved so you need to read and understand the sop insert and manual given by the company and real life Yes, of course, you need to hands-on. Whenever there is problem, you need to hands-on to troubleshoot the QC problem. So, with that, I end my QC presentation uh, part 2. And we will continue with the external quality assurance. Okay, with that, thank you.